Hey guys, how are we all doing? So today I'm going to be making a procedural typographic animation. Uh, it's almost like a network of data nodes moving and flowing through space. Um, just before I get into the tutorial, I'd just like to let you guys know that I do have a set of online assets that you guys can download for free. Uh, it's mainly mockups, but i am got a few textures in there and I'm constantly working to try and produce the highest quality stuff uh, for free for you guys so that you can create the same level of work as people in industry and really help you guys take that first step to get into industry and really looking professional. I also have uh, social media, so feel free to check out my Instagram account at A3House, A5House and my personal account, which is nblowy. Hey guys, so we're going to be creating a kind of typographic network like you've just seen earlier. Um, yeah, I guess we can just jump into it. So initially, we're going to create our data point and then we're going to create the actual network that these data points can be instanced on. So I'm going to make the data points in uh, geometry nodes, but essentially you can just create any object in a collection and then instance those uh, objects within the collection. So we're going to add a... Uh, we're going to add a sphere to then take us into geometry nodes and we're just going to use this to create a container to then add a grid back in. So once we have our grid in there, what we can do is we can actually reduce the size of this to something a bit more manageable like that. So this is kind of like the bullet point or the node for our kind of data to, to come from. So we're going to add a, a strings to curve node and this is going to be our typographic object. So once we create an input, we have our typographic element. So let's go back to our grid and we are going to just put this to something where it kind of aligns with the grid. So we're going to need a join geometry node to bring these two objects together. So we can see our text is kind of, um, we see our text doesn't actually have a, a surface on it yet. So we need to add a fill curve node, <clears throat> drop that in there and we have our, our surface. So at this point you can just select here to add your uh, font or you can just use the default one in Blender. So once you've added your font, I've added a new rail alphabet light uh, that's going to display our new font and we're just going to reduce the size of this to, I'm just going to take the value from here and we can see that that's not actually correct yet but we're going to need to play with this a little bit in our transform geometry node so we're going to add that and just play around with this until we feel it's about visually right so just kind of aligning it on the x and y as best we can just bringing it out a little bit we want this surface we just want this to align roughly so we're actually just going to scale down our grid a little bit uh, we can actually do this in a better way by adding a value and then adding a math node and we can divide this by maybe 50 and plug this into here and then we've got a little bit more control when scaling this up so we're just going to align that to there like that so that's six okay and we're just going to try and roughly align this best we can just so it's roughly right you know we don't have to overthink it but you know the more accurate the, the better it's going to be um and i'm just going to move this a little bit along to about there just so it's kind of visually another square along okay so once we've got that set up we have our, our string input here and there's various inputs we can do to you know create some dynamic uh text so a good one to start off with is just our scene time input we just add a value to string this allows us to define uh, how many decimal places so if we apply two decimal places, we get our, you know, our value and then we can just add seconds in here and we can see that after one second, you know, we have a, we have a kind of dynamic data point now. So once we've got our initial one, we can kind of use this setup to create various different values and numbers. The more we do, the better, you know, the, the more variance there's going to be in these data points once they're instance. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a bunch of these. Uh, using different inputs and I'll just kind of talk through uh, different ways of doing that you know we can use our frame and we can use kind of math nodes to to change this etc so here you can see we have a uh, sign so we just added our scene time in here and it's now just oscillating from one to minus one which is quite interesting uh, we also have uh, cosine and tangent which will create a different kind of uh, movement uh, so this one goes uh, to infinity and back very quickly uh, cosine is just um, sine offset by uh, a wavelength and you can use these and they'll create different versions you know and we can even use uh, degrees which is uh, an interesting one and there's various other kind of ones we can do just to slow down that movement 
So I'm just going to apply them. So you can see if we use our join strings node and the string, we just paste in our degree value. We actually get that character uh, added, which is quite nice. And you can do this for, you know, various other things. Uh, say if we swap this around and we added this underneath, we could then do, you know, X. Uh, for our x position for example you know okay so once you've got your set of values or inputs uh, we can go on to actually creating our network so if we just create if we just call this uh, values and then we make a new collection and call this network and we can just hide these and if we add a plane and then bring this into geometry nodes, we can actually uh, just delete this input. And we can just add a grid to essentially create some information, a vector information that we can see over here. And we want to move these points to create a network feel. Yeah. You know? So we're going to add a set position node, which is going to set the position of those points. And then we're going to add a noise texture. And the noise texture just basically creates randomness for these points. So they are not uh, as linear as the grid. So you can see. What's happening here is that they're being positioned uh, randomly, but what's actually happening is the randomness is being offset by uh, 0.5 in all directions. So you can see this diagonal uh, movement that's happening. So the way we can offset this is just subtract uh, the value. So we're gonna add a maths node. We're gonna use the vector function. So we're gonna plug that in there and then just subtract that by 0.5. And that's gonna recenter our points. <clears throat> what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna duplicate this and add a multiply node and we're actually just going to multiply this to amplify that offset so i'm going to do this by five and i'm going to make this noise 4d so we have a evolution function in the node so i'm going to add another scene time which just gives us our seconds information or our frame information and i'm going to plug this into the evolution value and you can see that this is now actually moving over time but the issue is it's really fast it's really choppy and it doesn't really move that nice so to get that more sm smoother uh, noise, we're actually just going to turn all of these values down to zero. And then I'm just going to reduce the scale of uh, our noise to something like 0.25, which is going to create a much more uh, dynamic movement. And I'm just going to end our animation at 1000 frames for now. So what we can do is we can just reduce this size by something like 0.25. Uh, seven and we can now kind of increase the amount of amount of points so i'm actually going to set this to kind of three subdivisions so not super massive so you can see our points are now moving about so what we can do now is actually uh, instance our points so we're going to add an instance on points node so we're going to instance our data points or our values on the points we have that are moving about here so if we plug this in here uh, nothing happens right now and that's because we need to add our collection in so once we plug this into our instances we can see all of our points are now being instanced but they're all being instanced on all at once so if we click pick instances and then separate the children we can now see that we're getting uh, different values so what we want to do next is just scale our instances to something a bit more kind of reasonable and we can actually just turn up the the volume of our noise to something a bit more appropriate and this is quite interesting you can see there's almost a murmuration happening and if we're not too happy on the actual movement what we can do is we can just uh divide our scene time uh, with a math node so if we just divide this by two and just decrease this or we can even increase this something like that the smaller the scale the more kind of together those points are going to move about so it's really up to you you might want something more random like this and they're all going to kind of stay within a bounds um, and not really move around too much. They'll always kind of stay within this bounds. So I'm going to set our scale to one for this. Actually, let's go 0.65. Okay, so now's probably a good time to set a material. So I'm going to add a set material node and I'm just going to plug in our default material. And over here, I'm going to go to our shader editor. I'm now going to save my file and I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to delete this and add a an, an emission texture. And I'm going to select that and then plug that in. And now if we go into our rendered view, we can just hit pause. Um, and in our world settings, we can just turn everything down and then we can kind of remove that. So we just want to make sure we've actually set the right material. So these two are linked together. Uh, we, we see we have our data points now but there's nothing kind of like connecting these individual points. So we have this information over here. So what we can do is we can add a mesh to curve node up here, and we can just plug this in here. And now what we can do is we can add a curve to mesh node here, and then we can add a curve circle node just under here. And I'm just gonna divide this by four, reduce this to something like 0 0.025. That's gonna be our curve. And this is gonna be our curve profile. We're gonna fill taps. And then I'm going to add a join geometry here i'm also gonna plug this into our joint geometry but you can see we don't see anything happening yet uh it is there but what i've done is i've accidentally 
plugged it in uh, before its displacement so we need to plug it in here and then we'll get the right geometry we can also reduce this again to something much smaller probably something like this would be better and you can see they all intersect perfectly at the center because we didn't move our, our data point node it was centered in the world's orientation so i'm going to add another set material node but i'm going to set it to our original one and i'm going to add that to our material settings here and i'm also going to add a emission node and okay so if i plug this into the surface and then reduce the value by 0.25 we can see that once we set the material and go into your rendered view we get this so the issue with this is that our lines are kind of going over the top of our data nodes and that's because they're actually kind of connected like this it's actually kind of like true to what what it should be um a way of getting around this and something that is a little bit hacky but it does work is we can actually uh set the position of our of our data points we can actually kind of transform these um on the z-axis so if we just move this up on the z-axis above our geometry to something like 3.5 which is way above they'll never overlap uh you can see we've actually moved it above you know like we would move a layer above in after effects we've we've done the same thing here and everything now works it's it's quite interesting the cool thing about this is we can just increase what we want we can animate this this can be any form of geometry it doesn't have to be a grid uh, as you can see in the uh, introduction i did uh, a 3d model um of a guy moving uh, if you want to see how i instantly point on that i'd recommend and go and watching uh, my tutorial here where i go go over that but yeah you know it's it's pretty flexible you know we can add a sphere here and plug it in there and we get a completely different look something that might actually be a bit more visually interesting um you know we can reduce the the kind of like uh, distance between these points if we want something a bit more close together on our you know amplifier maybe something like 2.5 might be a bit more nice really but yeah that's that's essentially the tutorial uh it's a bit of a quick one uh but you know you do get quite an interesting look and and you can also add a multiply if you want to crash your computer you can do some really crazy stuff and you know you can plug this into the instant scale which is going to do something like this which is kind of cool um yeah you can get some interesting looks like the rotation maybe you could plug this into the scale of the entire uh kind of stroke and do some really really wild stuff but yeah you know the possibilities are, are kind of endless with 3d and especially geometry nodes so don't feel like you can't try something um yeah always always explore always find new ways of doing things and hopefully you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I'm sure I'll see you guys soon.